How do you help people shift their paradigms? Talk to me about your work. It really begins by listening. And uh, there are multiple dimensions in, in healing and healthcare that represent the multiple dimensions of what we are as human beings. And I see my job in many ways as being able to listen and reflect and figure out what dimension, what aspect needs to be adjusted or addressed? Is it something we're eating? Are we not moving enough? Are we under too much stress and not resting? Do we have a lot of held emotions that need to be moved? Are we have a spiritual yearning that we don't feel connected to? And to be able to really identify in someone through deep listening is really what my first session is about. And then eventually, it's ultimately a a bridging of three things that I aim to do. One is through counseling. We help people shift their paradigm first by being able to recognize their paradigm, which most of us don't. We tend to be so embedded within our beliefs, our thoughts, our emotions, that we don't have a perspective on them. And part of my job is offering that. Well, one thing that's beautiful, too, is that when people come to you, they're at a certain level of readiness. They've admitted that they have an issue or a problem and they're ready to address it. So then what are the other two things that you do? Counseling? The the other two, uh, Albert Einstein has a beautiful saying which says, we cannot solve problems at the same level of thinking which created them. And a big part of my movement has always been about meditation. And part of the construct where a lot of people's issues tend to be is again at this level of beliefs, thoughts, and emotions. And so we need to find a way to either rise above them or below them, to have some kind of non-rational, non-emotional type of experience in order to have a perspective and then be able to shift the paradigm. And so the second part of what I often do with people is teaching them meditation, teaching them breathing and meditative techniques that offer them the possibility of learning how to still their mind. And from that place, rather than being some empty stillness that has no content, becomes a very rich world and a powerful means for insight and transformation. And then you use the needles, as a traditional acupuncturist would, to release a lot of the areas that are blocked in the body. And that's the third layer. Um, Actually, by the time I graduated from college, I was much closer to becoming a psychologist. And (laughs) what made me pause was having studied all of these different forms of traditional healing that offered a kind of energetic or subsystem to what represents our thoughts and emotions and how that interfaces with our body. And without being able to touch into that, I discovered and still practice there's a limit to how much we can move and how much we can shift. And so the two main tools I use for that is classical acupuncture, but in some ways, more importantly, a practice called Satnam Rasayan, which is the healing tradition of Kundalini Yoga and involves an application of meditative awareness in order to tap into and shift these deeper energetic patterns which represent our thought and emotions. What I find that you do that's so different than a traditional acupuncturist is um, when you're putting the needles in, you you reach sort of a, a state of stillness with your patient and then you put your hand, usually on the arm, and I like to describe it as sort of these fireworks going off where just... Um, you sink into this oddly, you know, quite contrary to fireworks, but into this deep meditative state where your mind is still, but so much is tran- transforming. And, and it's, I, I use the firework analogy because it's really, um, so much is happening and exploding during this still period. And literally you walk out of your office and you feel shifted. So it's very dramatic. And that's certainly the hope and part of my approach is healing through experience. And I think it's where a lot of these traditions are about. It's not something necessarily we believe or we know. It's something that we can access in an immediate first-hand experiential way. And it's a very big part of my work. 